Wait! Before you let them clean off your plate, be sure you know exactly which foods are harmful to greyhounds. You may see foods listed here that you've been feeding your greyhound for years. Then again, you also may occasionally find unpleasant mystery surprises on the floor. You're bound to find out things here today that will make your greyhound healthier, happier, or at least save you a lot of cleaning up. Why bad foods are worse for greyhounds. Foods that are bad for all dogs are even worse for greyhounds because they only have half the body fat of the average dog, and that means anything they take in hits them all at once. So a greyhound's reaction is going to be more severe and possibly more debilitating. Rarely a day goes by that I don't get put on a guilt trip by somebody in my own household because I won't let him feed Lily something from his plate. Now, mind you, not that she doesn't get any table scraps, but that little treat given now may mean that I'm going to be doing something unpleasant and unexpected later. Think cleaning up vomit or diarrhea, having to struggle to get the dog up for a walk, administering Pepto-Bismol, gas drops, you get the picture. It's much healthier for her if I separate out a few tidbits while I cook, such as plain noodles, meat, and vegetables before they're baked into a casserole or covered with sauces that contain things that might not sit too well with her. It's easy to gain a false sense of security from articles that tell you how much of something a dog has to eat for it to be fatal. Well, there's a whole lot of illness and discomfort that can occur between health and death. In other words, a food that's fatal does not magically become okay in smaller amounts. They can still shorten your dog's life, or make him very unhappy at least. Even worse, there are some toxins in foods that will build up unseen in your greyhound system, and you won't even realize it until the damage has been done. Now, keep in mind, I'm not a strict, all-natural, all-organic, perfect, down-to-the-point, 0001% greyhound nutrition person. You know, there are plenty of people on the internet who do that very well, and it's not hard to find them, and frankly, I don't think you can go wrong with such a careful approach to your dog's diet. Many of us, however, will get lost in the weeds with information overload, and we're unlikely to maintain the strict regimen suggested by these sources. You're watching this because you want some practical guidelines which you can learn easily and stay with for the entire happy, healthy lifetime of your greyhound. So let's get started on the top 10 foods that are bad for greyhounds. Number 1. Grapes Never feed this hazardous food to your greyhound. It can cause neurological problems and even lead to sudden kidney failure. Now, this one I've experienced with my own greyhound. I'll explain. My neighbor used to have the cutest little old lady who would come in and clean for her. This cleaning lady also had greyhounds, and we used to exchange tips once in a while. Well, one day she came running out of the house in a huge rush to tell me never to feed my dog grapes. She said that she'd been giving her greyhound frozen grapes, thinking it was a healthy, pleasant treat in the warm weather. Well, she ended up taking the dog to the vet because the poor thing was walking into walls. She was stunned when the vet told her that grapes can cause brain damage. Luckily, after stopping the grapes, her dog improved. Well, she was very relieved when I told her, no, my dog doesn't even like fruit, never mind getting grapes. Later on, though, it occurred to me that I do give him raisins. And while I never saw him walk into a wall, he did have a mysterious head tremor that cropped up once in a while. One minute he'd be fine, and the next he'd look like an 85-pound bobblehead. After that, Shannon never ate another raisin, and never suffered another scary head tremor. Number two, fat trimmings. I never realized these were a problem until just this past Christmas, when Lily cleaned off one plate too many after our roast beef dinner. We're lucky she didn't end up in the animal hospital, or worse. It turns out that too much fat can cause your greyhound's pancreas to go into overdrive, prematurely flooding her system with digestive enzymes, which can even be fatal. Lily threw up four times on the rug that night, and then lay on the floor for several hours. In small amounts, this fat would have been lovely for her. We now know to collect those trimmings into a Ziploc bag and freeze it, adding just a little at a time as a flavor enhancement to her regular food. Number three, yeast dough. Yeast dough is deceptively dangerous. Now this is one thing that you probably would never intentionally feed your greyhound. However, many owners will let their dog taste anything if he seems interested. But even this little bit is hazardous. The other way your greyhound can scarf your bread dough is by counter-surfing, or if a piece gets away from you while you're shaping it into a loaf. There are several ways in which yeasted dough can make your greyhound sick. 
First, and most obvious, it can swell up in his digestive tract, causing dangerous pressure on his organs, or causing a blockage. Next, the yeast, as it ferments, gives off ethanol gases, which will go into his bloodstream, causing alcohol poisoning. As if all that isn't bad enough, its increasing mass in your deep-chested greyhound's stomach as it rises can cause deadly bloat. And finally, uncooked flour, dough's main ingredient, has been showing up on food recall lists as a foodborne illness hazard. If you check out the fine print on your sack of flour, you're likely to find a warning to this effect that you never even noticed before. Number four, carrageenan. This is a most concerning and very common additive. Used as a thickener, it's often found in canned or wet dog foods. It can cause inflammation in the digestive tract as well as cancer. This ingredient alone has been the culprit of irritable bowel for many pets. Number five, rendered meat byproducts. You may see this listed under alternative names like meat and bone meal, MBM, animal fat, animal digest, or blood meal. When you see the phrase byproducts on the label, that's not necessarily a deal breaker as long as it specifies what kind of meat it comes from. Otherwise, this ingredient covers a nasty range of surprises. With these ingredients, you truly do not know the species of meat being consumed by your pet in his kibble, or what it died of, or even, and this will stun you, it, it stunned me, even if it was derived from a creature who may have needed a little help getting over the rainbow bridge. And let me point out that that anesthesia stays in the animal's body after it has been put down. The meat byproduct may be from that unsold package of meat, you know, the manager's special that you stuck your nose up at the supermarket thinking it looked a little gray. It may not even be from an animal at all, but discarded fryer oil from a restaurant. All of these ingredients are processed to be less pathogenic, but some stuff like bacteria and mold isn't killed all that easily. The oil is particularly concerning as it contains carcinogenic free radicals. By the way, the use of fryer oil, when I did my research, that was a surprise to me. I happen to know a man who owns a biofuel business in a resort area, and he makes a very good living off collecting this oil from local restaurants and turning it into a non-fossil fuel. Seems like such a win-win way to dispose of it, doesn't it? Number six, artificial food dye. Anecdotal evidence from fellow greyhound owners about trouble with food dye is plentiful. The two complaints I see all the time are hyperactivity and diarrhea. Peer-reviewed scientific studies tie it to tumors. I have some personal experience with these dyes because my children had some crazy emotional responses after consuming them. My son's reactions were so alarming, as in sudden mood shifts and welts on his neck where he'd worn a candy necklace. Yikes. Well, I took him to the pediatrician. I know, you're probably rolling your eyes thinking, oh, some mothers will take a kid to the doctor over every little sniffle. But frankly, I can count on one hand the number of sick visits that I had my kids to in the last 21 years. I think it was four for my son and, and only one for my daughter. Well, anyway, the doctor told me some very interesting things about FD and C food dyes, which you'll also find are applicable to greyhounds. First, they're considered neurotoxic. Second, they're much more widely used than when I was a kid, in a greater variety of foods and in heavier concentration. Next, they can contain other toxic substances that you'd never see on the food label, because that only lists the ingredients, but not what's in the ingredients. So in other words, the blue number one that's in your marshmallows and the yellow number five in that dessert that cost you a fortune at the Cheesecake Factory contains the same neurotoxin that made all the kids melt down after the cake was served at the birthday party. And that's what's in many dog treats and foods. Yet there are so many great products for dogs that don't contain these colors, or they're colored with vegetable dyes. Why? The reason is that FD and C food dyes are used to cover up a low quality product, which you wouldn't buy for your pet if you ever saw it without its colorful disguise. By the way, hey, Cheesecake Factory, you had one job. Number seven, why I don't do the raw diet. I've had salmonella and other foodborne poisoning so many times that the only way you'd see my greyhound on a raw diet would be if I hired her a personal chef. The raw diet, or barf diet, contains Russian roulette levels of raw meat handling for you. I also question the concept, this is how dogs ate in the wild. Well, first, our dogs are not wild. Usually. They're domesticated. Second, 
Raw is how people ate in the wild, too, but hey, that ship has sailed. Finally, raw meat from the store is nothing like what any animal yesterday or today eats in the wild. When that meat is processed, packaged, and sold, it's done so with the expectation that it's going to be heated to a temperature which will kill any pathogens which might have developed on its surfaces during all that handling. I live in an area with coyotes and koi wolves, and I can tell you that their diet is very, very fresh. Meat in the wild is consumed before it even has a chance to get cold. If some unfortunate creature is hit in the car or just dies out there, and it's, it's spoiling, you'll notice that it's the crows and ravens that clean it up. The dogs, even the coyotes and wolves, they won't touch it. Maybe they know something we don't. Number 8. Alliums, onions, garlic, chives, etc. These are very common in the foods we eat, so think twice before feeding table scraps to your greyhound. Restaurant food is especially high in alliums. Be doubly cautious with your leftovers from takeout. Dr. Ann Hohenhaus of the Animal Medical Center in New York states that alliums contain N-propyl disulfide, which can cause a fatal anemia in dogs. 9. Soy Genetic modifications to our soy supply have made this food a true loser for your greyhound. Issues include indigestibility, carcinogen, and a host of other perils. It can be difficult to detect soy just from a quick glance at the ingredients label. Since dog food manufacturers realize that savvy greyhound owners have gotten wise to the dangers of soy, they'll often disguise it under other names, using the word vegetable, as in vegetable protein, or lecithin, or even natural flavoring. Number 10. Chocolate. Chocolate contains methazanthines, which are harmful to your greyhound. I suspect you're sensible enough to not actually give him chocolate, but be very careful of your own supply. Some greyhounds consider anything they reach to be fair game. For example, on Valentine's Day, you may love to see that pretty heart-shaped box sitting on your coffee table, but remember that it might be pretty attractive to your greyhound, too. On Easter, make sure that bunny hides those baskets behind closed doors where the children can find them, but the greyhound cannot. On Christmas, well, this is the toughest one of all. We always have lots of chocolate around then, spilling out of stockings, gift wrapped under the tree, sitting out in candy dishes. Rethink the placement of each of these treats. Teach your other family members too, but don't stop there. Christmas is so full of excitement and distractions that routine cautions are easily forgotten, so be sure to follow up. It's your job to keep track of all that chocolate, and I know it's a tough job, but somebody has to do the heavy lifting, right? But wait, there's more! Quite a few more foods that are in fact bad for your greyhound, so I'm going to be following up this video with a series of shorts, each featuring another nutritional no-no for your best buddy. Say, if there's a food that doesn't sit well with your greyhound, please share it in the comments below and give your fellow greyhound owners a heads up. If you want to know right now what the rest of the bad foods are, you can check out the full article over at greyhoundhomecare.com. This great Bottoms Up Greyhound t-shirt is now available in several colors over at the Greyhound Home Care store linked below. And I'll see you next time on the Greyhound Home Care channel.